The South Korean military continues to be on high alert in case of any provocations. Due to North Korea's increasingly provocative actions, the South Korean military is reportedly looking at expanding research into building its own nuclear-powered submarines. Several local media outlets have cited an unidentified official who says the military could make a final decision on the matter by the end of this year. After considering local and international protocols, another military official said various experts have pointed to the nuclear subs as the most effective way to deter North Korea's threats. But they would go against the Moon administration's emphasis on the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Today, North Korea state television also showed Kim Jong-un at what appeared to be a military drill today, practicing amphibious landings and parachuting drills. Saturday's test is in defiance of President Trump, who warned about three weeks ago that he would unleash fire and fury if North Korea continued its threats. Now, the White House says they are monitoring the situation. President Moon Jae-in is stressing the importance of patience as South Korea looks to improve ties with North Korea. Speaking at a working luncheon with lawmakers from the ruling Democratic Party on Saturday, he said inter-Korean relations cannot be resolved right away and that long-term preparation is key. President Moon joined the lunch after meeting with the National Security Council in response to Pyongyang's latest missile launches. In a wide-ranging speech, he touched on various other subjects such as the economy and the future of the party. The president added that he respects the National Assembly and that he will do everything he can to communicate and cooperate with the opposition parties. So, no word so far from North Korea on today's missile launch, but the regime's state-run media has reported that Kim Jong-un oversaw a special forces exercise simulating an invasion of South Korean border islands. It took place on Friday, the day the regime celebrated its 57th anniversary of the Songun, or military first ideology. You're looking at pictures of the drills there. The exercises included land, sea and air units attacking a target simulating the South Korean border islands of Bengyeongdo and Yongpyeongdo. Kim is said to have been satisfied with the drill and called on the forces to be ready to occupy Seoul and South Korea in one go. North Korea did, in fact, shell Yongpyeongdo in 2010, killing four South Koreans, which led to Seoul significantly increasing its military presence in the area. Any signs of military tensions easing on the border? Well, Daniel, unfortunately, no. Military tensions at the inter-Korean border remains to be at its highest alert, uh, although high-level inter-Korean talks are taking place right now. So what about South Korean military's preparations for any possible provocations from North Korea? Could you give us some specifics? Well, South Korea remains to be on its highest alert level, especially with its loud, loudspeaker propaganda uh, continuing at all of its 11 loudspeakers on the border. Now, South Korean and the U.S. military remains on the second highest level of their five-level WatchCon threat alert system. A WatchCon level two is issued in the case of imminent threat from the north. The Allies are utilizing their full arsenal of reconnaissance satellites, planes and other military assets. 
Uh, military officials remain vigilant of any unusual movements from North Korea. The latest launch is also the first since the United Nations Security Council voted unanimously to impose strict new sanctions on Pyongyang. And in response to launching those two inter intercontinental ballistic missiles last month. Now, the new sanctions are estimated to cost North Korea a billion dollars a year or a third of its exports. The hope, Neil, the hope was that these sanctions would lead Kim Jong-un to come to the negotiating table sooner rather than later. And if today is any, in any indication, it's more of the same, at least so far, from North Korea. Well, look, we had a graphic up during the hit just now in which we showed that these missile launches are sort of the norm now. And it, it, I would say that if this were an ICBM, you'll see that's 13 missile tests and 21 missile launches on parts of what we saw last year. Uh, these were short-range missiles. This wasn't the long form or the long-range missiles that we had seen, the ones that could potentially reach Guam and North America. Now, the administration has said that they would unleash fire and fury if missiles were launched toward Guam, given the fact that this seems to be more of the same from North Korea, I would expect us to stay monitoring the situation, as they said. A photo released by North Korea's state media is turning heads the world over. It shows the regime may be close to completing a new type of submarine launch ballistic missile. Kim Yeon-bin zooms in on the development, which could further escalate tensions on the peninsula. A recent photo unveiled by Pyongyang indicates that the regime is close to developing a new submarine ballistic missile, known as the Pukusong-3. The chart shows the structure of the SABN displayed behind North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. During his visit to the Chemical Material Institute at the Academy of Defense Science earlier this week, many experts believe that North Korea could be in the final stages of developing the missile. In a recent video, Pyongyang released footage of possible body of a Pukguksong-3 SLBM, so I believe it is near completion. Earlier this year, the regime fired a new intermediate-range SLBM known as the Pukuksong-2, which is known to use a solid-fuel engine. North Korea is trying to perfect the solid-fuel engine since this makes it harder for satellites to detect the missiles before launch. Experts say that the regime could have even test-launched the Pukuksong-3 engine in their recent co-launch test in late July. I believe the recent three cold-launch engine tests from the regime were from the newly built SLBM. Experts say North Korea will consider the most effective date to maximize their provocations when planning to test launch the new missiles. Staying with North Korea, fresh new image from the regime appears to be boasting of its technical capabilities, showing the new submarine-launched ballistic missile on the regime's state-run media. Now, this after its leader Kim Jong-un ordered for more production of rocket engines and nuclear warheads for ballistic missiles at a chemicals research institute. Watchers say this could be an indirect message that the regime could test fire the missile soon. Kim Hyo-san reports. North Korea state-run media has shown a photo of what is presumed to be a new submarine-launched ballistic missile called the Pukuksong-3. It's the first time the regime has revealed information about its new SLBM. The media outlet also revealed information about its new intercontinental ballistic missile, what looks like the Hwasong-13. The same photos were shown behind North Korean leader Kim Jong-un as he visited a chemicals research institute to observe and learn about the process of manufacturing ICBMs. Kim ordered the institute to expand the production of both rocket warhead tips and solid fuel rocket engines required for ballistic missiles launched from submarines. As the U.S.-based North Korea monitoring website 38 North recently said satellite images show Pyongyang could be preparing for a new SLBM launch, pundits say the photo can be perceived as an indirect message that its test launch could be imminent. The regime launched the Pukuksong-1 in August last year and the Pukuksong-2 earlier this year. Experts say both missiles use solid-fuel rocket engines.